challenged me to a discussion and he wanted to get back on, you know, a live discussion. I thought it best that we do something, especially with the time schedule that I have. And I know he's busy too, but, you know, I have a radio program, a TV program and, you know, uh, regular uh, local work and several other things going on. And so I thought it best that we have a, uh, you know, a discussion sort of like this, where I said, why don't we just do a video? You create a video, I create a video and respond to that and vice versa. But send me the proposition. Let's work out some protocol and then we will uh, we will do it. Well, he refused to do that. And, uh, and I offered to do a written discussion with him and he refused to do that. So we got into some discussions on Facebook and talked about those a little bit and you know, I sent him some questions that I didn't get any answers to, or at least he, he answered a few of them, but I still had some other questions that I wanted him to answer. And, uh, and I, you know, he spent about four days a week, you know, or so uh, in delay in getting those answers. And I still haven't gotten the answers to all of those questions. And, um, and then he puts out this video. And I thought, well, that's rather interesting because when I offered him the opportunity to have a discussion in this format, he rejected it. He refused it or didn't say anything to me about it. And I didn't know that he was putting the video out. So he went ahead and did so, and which is fine. I mean, you know, that's fine. I don't have any problem with that. But I, I think it needs to be um, made clear that he was the one who had uh, initially uh, called me out. He put on his video that I called him out. As a matter of fact, uh, let me see if I can roll that clip. <laughs> I want to make that clear. There are full preterists whom I love, uh, who I would uh, pray for. Certainly, Can you all hear that? But who I love, and this isn't a personal attack towards anyone. I don't believe that that's the spirit of Christ uh, to come out uh, personally attacking anyone, maybe, regardless of their I belief, hit, regardless of how help. false the belief might be. All right, it is not our job to personally attack anyone. However, it is our job to preach the word of God. How you doing, cuz? Bless you, Kim. Uh, so so we want to talk about this. So we're not here to personally attack anyone. Uh, this, this isn't uh, personal towards anyone. Uh, you all know William Bell. He's actually a uh, full preterist, one of the more popular uh, full preterist teachers, and he's very uh, influential on social media. He's actually called me out, asked me a few questions. So. I'm just giving his name <laughs> because uh, I would like him to uh, watch this video also and to respond to it, right? Not necessarily lie, uh, but I want his response because we're gonna go into the word of God. So here's why we have to teach about this. I'm gonna go right to the scriptures, right? If we understand uh, the scripture, uh, then we have to let the scripture again be the authority. What does the scripture say about the doctrine of full preterism. Again, what does the scripture say about the doctrine of full preterism? Let me read. Second Timothy chapter number two, verse number 16 through 18 says this. It says, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message, watch this, will spread like a cancer. Then Paul calls a couple of names. He says, Hymenaeus and Philetus, are of this sort, right? So Paul is addressing profane and idle babblings who will increase to more ungodliness and that their message will spread like a cancer. Again, brother, I know there are some people that say, man, why don't you just leave that stuff alone? If people are in bad doctrine, let them believe what they want to believe. Why do you even address these things? Why do you teach on these things? What's up, brother Isaac? Uh, why do you even talk about these things? Well, the scripture tells us uh, exactly why, because it says their message will spread like cancer. And Paul says, Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. Watch this, 2 Timothy 2, verse 18, who have strayed concerning the truth. They've strayed concerning the truth. How have they strayed? Watch what Paul goes on to say saying that the resurrection is already past and they overthrow the faith of some. So if full preterism, 
is not true, then according to what we have just read in scripture is that they have strayed concerning the truth and overthrown the faith of some. And so this is why we've got to teach on this to bring clarity to what the scripture is saying. Okay, you heard the um, arguments from Michael Holloway. That was his ver first piece that he um, chose to present. I consider it a little bit of poisoning the well, but I, you know, it's the, the argument that is generally made against the full preterist view. And um, I think it's important for us to address it. That wasn't really first on the agenda. I didn't know that he was going to get into it so quickly. As a matter of fact, I didn't have time to really listen to his full presentation until today, earlier today. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. This is one of the places where people misunderstand the full preterist view. So let me just go ahead and touch it real quick. Uh, we might get back to it. I know that I have uh, something on it. So let me put that on the screen and we'll just uh, go from there. Now, the question is, when we teach the full preterist view, are we teaching the doctrine of Hymenaeus and Philetus? This is what futurist charges with all the time. And the reason is because either they don't read the text and they don't understand what we teach or both. And as a result, they make this blunder every single time. So let's take a look at it. We'll look at both the scripture and we'll look at this. But I, you know, when you look at the chart, um, you've got three choices there. If you're going to talk about the preterist view, you can either choose to make an argument that discusses uh, events before the fall of the temple in 70 AD. You can speak about events that happen after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Or you can talk about events that happen in 70 AD or at 70 AD. And the preterist view, for those of you, and I know most of the people who are on this call uh, at least understand it, but the preterist view is not the one on the left, which Michael Holloway chose, and it's not the one on the right, which a lot of um, futurists choose as well. I mean, which Hymenaeus and, and Philetus chose, I'd say, on the left, but that's the one that the futurists use in order to attempt uh, a refutation of what we're saying. When you look at the statement, Hymenaeus and Philetus are arguing for a resurrection that occurred before the temple fell in 70 AD. That is not our view. And so for a person to do a presentation and he starts out with that particular argument shows that he is not informed about what we're saying or that he doesn't care about it. And I don't know whether that could be true, but uh, he didn't really take enough um, um, interest in the topic before he began to talk about it to even investigate that argument and see how it applies uh, or how it doesn't apply. And to make it at this point, uh, which means that he's on the other side of the destruction of the temple uh, to still argue for the return of Christ, uh, which we ascribe to 70 AD, is a misrepresentation of both Hymenaeus and Philetus as well as of our view. Um, those, both of those are different. Now let's look at the scripture and show where the distinction is in terms of what Paul is saying and what Hymenaeus and Philetus said. So let's get the text in front of us. And I'm going to put the text up first just so we can see it once again. And then we'll go to another uh, another passage. But you know, that chart is like the three doors that they have on the prices, right? <laughs> you know, you got to pick the right door. <laughs> if you pick the wrong one, you lose. And Michael Holloway lost right out of the gate because he picked the wrong door. Um, so let's, uh, let's look at this. Now, in 2 Timothy 2, 17 and 18, the Bible says, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. Nevertheless, uh, excuse me, who have heard concerning the truth saying that the resurrection is already past 
and they overthrow the faith of some. Now, the key term in the text is that the resurrection is already past. Now, the first question that a good Bible student would have asked is, how does this relate to the destruction of the temple? In other words, when was this book or this epistle written? I've had dates that have ranged as early as 54 AD, which I don't really think that's accurate, but as late as 68 AD at the, at the latest. Most of them are somewhere between 65 to 67 AD. Now, if that is the case, then what we have is Hymenaeus and Philetus teaching that the resurrection was already passed prior to the fall of the temple and the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. That is not our view. That needs to be pointed out very, very clearly. If you're going to make the argument, please make the right argument. That is not the right argument. They're saying the resurrection was already passed before 70 AD. Now, let's examine Paul's uh, statement uh, further, his teaching in the very same chapter. You see, this is <laughs> it's just amazing. When people come to a study with a presupposition in mind, his assumption is that we're wrong. And so what he does is he looks for things to support that presupposition. And in doing so, he totally ignored the evidence that's in the context, that's within the very chapter and also the context, both before and after. All right, so let's take a look. We're going to go to verse 11. And in verse 11, the Bible says, this is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall, that's future tense, also live with him. Now, here's a death that has taken place in the very text that is being discussed. Paul says, if we died with him. Now, here's the question for Michael Holloway. Tell us how the disciples at Ephesus, to whom Paul wrote through Timothy, tell us how they had died. Were they physically dead? Paul said, for if we, in other words, he includes himself and says, if we died with him, now watch, we shall also live with him. So there was a future to Paul's teaching on the resurrection. That's not what Hymenaeus and Philetus was teaching. They were going in the opposite direction. Paul was going in a future direction, but we need to be a little bit careful because probably Michael Holloway will see that. Well, yes, he does say it was still future. That's why what you're saying is false. No, 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 no. Why would Paul teach that the resurrection was future in saying we shall live with him and then see in the next few verses that he would say, according to Hymenaeus and Philetus, the resurrection is already past if that were his doctrine. It's not. But let's go to the other side. And let's take a look in 2 uh, Timothy chapter 4. Because if you're going to deal with what Paul taught, you got to deal with all of it and not just cherry pick a verse out of context and then try to build a doctrine on it and uh, can think that you're refuting what um, what we've taught. So in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, here's what the text says. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now, if you look in the Greek, which we'll do here momentarily, let's just take a quick look at it, and you have the word melantos crinane, which says that he was about to judge the living and the dead. So Paul's doctrine was 
that Jesus was about to judge the living and the dead. He wasn't teaching that the resurrection had already occurred, like Hymenaeus and Philetus, but he was teaching that the resurrection was about to occur. Now, you didn't hear a single word from Michael Holloway about the time statements relative to the coming of the Lord and relative to the time of judgment. And this statement is not just found here. It's found in several uh, texts that we look at regarding the coming of the Lord. Sort of an interlinear, um, who, who shall, all right, there's the word mellow right there. G3195 in Strong's Concordance. You can look it up. With the present infinitive, it is about to be. And so he is saying that the resurrection was about to occur. Now, if you take that in consideration with 70 AD, then it makes sense that it was about to occur and not that it had already occurred. Furthermore, when you think about Hymenaeus and Philetus, they had been teaching this uh, for some time, and which means that they had gained a following. And so it indicates that they had at least had some influence regarding what they were teaching, you know, well before the epistle was written. And that's what Paul was indicating. But the key thing to understand with the doctrine of Hymenaeus and Philetus is that they were teaching a resurrection, a coming of the Lord, if you please, because those are concurrent events, as you can see right here from uh, 2 Timothy 4, because, you know, the coming of the Lord, the judgment of and, and the resurrection, the uh, uh, appearing and the kingdom are all concurrent events. And so if you're saying that the resurrection had occurred, you're also saying that the coming of the Lord had occurred. You're saying that the eternal kingdom has come in its fullness. And you're also saying that uh, the judgment had occurred because they're all concurrent events. And that's what Hymenaeus and Philetus uh, were saying in making that particular statement. Now, they may not have understood all the ramifications of what they were teaching, but based on Paul's language here, because those are constituent elements of his coming, that had to be what they were saying. And therefore, they're teaching a resurrection that is separate and apart from the, um, the fall of the temple. And that's what's wrong with all futurist eschatology. It is separate from the fall of the temple, and that is where the Bible places the coming of the Lord.